Good morning, guys. Welcome back to The Breakfast Club. It's been another pretty gorgeous week out. It has been pretty nice. It hasn't even been raining or like well, we got blowing a little bit. Did you guys get rain last night? Wow, I slept through wow. it if we did. It was dry this morning. That's all I know. Hmm. I yeah. don't like why I had to water my flowers. It was dry. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. No, I think Virgin's good. We're good. No, the, the week was, it was actually beautiful. The wind was not, you know, blowing trees over and it wasn't No, but it was like inches. keeping the mosquitoes away. I had ball last night. So like for most yeah. of it, that little breeze was pretty good until yeah. it stopped and then yeah. the bugs were <laughs> awful. Yeah. The mosquitoes have come back in full force oh, since we got the 16 inches. Bad. They're horrible. Yeah. But we got those, um, what's it called? Skeeter. Uh, Skeeter Hawk. Skeeter Hawk. Yeah. That's a great um, line. We're just going to jump right into yeah. What's Up Wolverine. <laughs> um, I knew we've got quite a few different lines of products sprinkled in here yeah. these last couple weeks. And one of them is uh, the Skeeter Hawk brand. Yeah. And it, it does a bunch of different options that you can go with. They have the, uh, like the carabiner clips. Yep. You have the stationary traps, we'll call it. Yeah. Uh, there's and uh, do they have a spray? No, the wristbands. Sorry, that's what I was right. thinking of. They have wristbands you can wear. You can yeah. wear a, like a carabiner clip. And yeah. then you have your actual traps you can set out wherever you want. Yeah, lots of different options. So we'll definitely show you the information for those. Uh, check them out. <laughs> sure. <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool line of products. Yeah. So do you want to just get right into what's up with Yeah, I, I guess so. We'll, we'll talk about the other stuff later. So what's up, Ty? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. We got Canic restock in, so we yep. got the SFXs in both their colors and the TP9s and the Combat Elites. And then we also have the Combat Executives. Nice. Which would be amazing if I could wear a suit and conceal carry it, but oh. we can't because it would be amazing. But regardless, uh, we got those in along with all their magazines. So anything you need for Canic, it's all back in stock. Uh, what else did we get? I told you a bunch of different things. We Well, um, a common theme here, uh, we got lots of lever actions in. Lots yes. of uh, western, lots of revolvers. We actually built like, like a, what, I don't even know the name of the thing, someone tell me what it is. It's what you put out front of the building, you tie your horse to it. Oh. We got those installed <laughs> outside now. Lots of lever guns, revolvers, it's been great. Do you have horses? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You're tying my cat up to it, I guess. Like the stick horse? <laughs> If you see me riding up to the shop on one of those, yeah, that'll be a different day. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, no. uh, yeah, lots of different lever options. We got a Taylor's shipment, so yeah. lots of lever actions, lots of revolvers from yeah. them. Uh, we got a Marlin shipment as well. Yeah. And Henry, I believe Henry we have a couple well. Henry models. So. so Taylor's bringing in the old and Marlin bringing in the new, along with Henry is bringing in some of the new. But uh, the Taylor stuff, all their 1873s, 60s, uh, they're... Awesome, awesome revolvers. We've got a couple examples up here, 1873 carbines in 4440, and we also have 45 Colt and all those awesome calibers. Stop talking so fast. That is the the speed of which my <laughs> Your brain, brain commutes yeah, in my mouth. Anyways. Brain commutes my mouth. <laughs> See? See, you slow me down, and I start uh, misspelling words that are being spewed. So, all right, not even spelled. Oh my god. <laughs> anyways, anywho, anyways, uh, Taylor's is really good. Got lots of those in. The Marlin ones, kaboom. Everybody loves this guy Love or gal, it. whatever you want. You know, it's, it's a popular model. Yeah, the dark series. And then we also have the 36 shades of gray. <laughs> Cause hey, that's what it's called. To be honest, when I looked at it on the receiving report, I thought it was a typo. I thought it was a 336. No, it's 36 and, shades uh, of gray. Yeah. So that's different. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> Anyways, anywho. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Marlin, we got a bunch of the restocks in all in. 44 mag, 357, 3030. 30. I feel like that one's a weird caliber. Is there one that's a 35? Uh, no, that is the Henry's. Oh, that's the Henry. Yeah. Okay, so my bad. We got Henry's in in 35 Remington, which is my second favorite cartridge. I didn't know. I didn't even know that that was a cartridge. It is an amazing cartridge. I used to have a Remington Model 8, which I don't know if you'll be able to pull up a picture of a Remington <laughs> Model 8. They're amazing. <laughs> it's uh, like one of the earliest semi autos. Not, that's going to be a really fun little second there. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so yeah, the the Henrys, which uh, they came out with their side gate loading. So those are really awesome. We got those in as well in 35 Remington okay. and in another cartridge. <laughs> uh, I want to say 4440, but I know they didn't make it. I didn't see that on the receiving report. I don't remember for sure either. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, it's all there and yeah. below and yeah, down there. <laughs> <laughs> this one though, I feel like is not even going to be on the website still by the time this no. video comes out. It'll be gone. And that is a 4570. 
with a really short barrel. <laughs> really short barrel. That will pack a wallop, but whatever's on the receiving end of that. And I love their scout rail because it's an excess sights system lever rail. So you have ghost ring and just your standard rifle sight up front, which makes an awesome sighting uh, platform. And you also have that scout rail, bring it right up. So if you wanted forward mounted scout optics or something like a, uh, a micro dot or a reflex sight, which we have on there now is the Vortex Razor, makes an awesome uh, aiming solution because once you're behind it, you can rack the lever and that six MOA dot is right there and presented perfectly. So it would make for an awesome cartridge. Uh, not cartridge, sorry, an awesome uh, rifle. Super cool. Super cool. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, I suppose another new line that we're carrying is uh, rugged cases. Rugged. So, the rugged. <laughs> <laughs> some rifle cases, shotgun cases, uh, some multi-purpose. Like there's a, a handgun case, but it could also be a laptop case. Yeah. Um, it's one I would say too that if you're in the area, come and get your hands on it because yes. the pictures don't really do it justice to the material. It, the ma I was going to say the material is quite. It's yeah. not odd, but it's not well, photogenic. We don't like if you're if you live somewhere where it rains a lot, you're going to have lots of rain gear, and I'm envisioning like that. It's a softer like rain jacket material almost. You know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, it's not felt. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you want to come check it out, definitely do that. Yeah. Um, they're very nice. Yeah, no, that's um, it's, it's a decent brand. We are getting a lot more of the outdoory yeah. products in. I'm 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 enjoying it because I like the outdoors. It's Shooting's fun, but everybody not needs everything a rifle needs case. to have a handgun. No, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and lots of different purposes that you could use them for too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and because we like to talk about rimfire every episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to keep that up. Uh, yeah. We did get some CZ USA models. So a lot yes. of the time, the firearms we get in are CZ UB. Um, yeah. So we got some CZ USA models in, including a 22 457 at one model. At one model. So I'm not really sure what the significance is of that. So if the 457 at one is your standard 457 platform receiver and barrel yeah. platform uh, but this has a boyd's adjustable target stock uh, oh that's on. right yes so you have a quick adjust just simply with a button on the butt and the cheek right so you can just push a couple buttons your butt slides out <laughs> odd sentence <laughs> your cheek goes up and away you go <laughs> oh dear you know when we first started these these videos that that would have derailed the entire episode we would have shut it down oh, yeah. we would have started over we, we've just given but up now <laughs> luckily for you guys we just keep on rolling no matter what one take that's it <laughs> i am a one take person otherwise i'm going back to my trailer <laughs> no the yeah we got the at ones and we also got the i believe we got did we was it on the receiving report the uh the trainers I didn't see specifically, but it we, could be. We do have the 457 trainers with Manor, or sorry, yeah, it's a Manor stock. So okay. those ones are super nice. If it is, if we do, it'll it'll be here. Right here. <laughs> uh, the price on those is substantially higher than right. the other ones, but it's a Manor stock. Yeah. Like, bah. Yeah. So okay. It's definitely worth it um, if you're doing any kind of. Uh, they're a good training platform because if you're running a precision rig and you just want some like. Oh, well, even precision rimfire is really starting to take off around yeah. here too. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, if I think we talked about it last episode that we were going to be running a secondary draw for two CZ Shadow Twos. Yes, and all so, the T-shirts are sold now. We, th yeah, I'm pretty sure they should be. <laughs> On Thursday at about 11 a.m., there was two left, and right. I refuse to say that two of those didn't sell within <laughs> the time frame between then and now. So hopefully we will be announcing the winners this coming week. Or we already did. Or we already did. Who if knows? If want to be super optimistic about that. Ah. Hey, it could happen. You never so, know. Anyways, uh... <laughs> <laughs> if we did, congratulations to the winners. If not, we will keep you posted this week on who those winners are. Do you just want to take like some stock footage? We'll just put the winners right here if they're here. <laughs> Boom, right there, see? Okay. There, All right. we got winners are there. <laughs> Um, we have had a lot of engagement on our social media this week, and it's been great. Uh, we, we love drumming up conversation and hearing from everybody. Um, <laughs> I love arguing on the well, internet. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> it's not arguing, it's just no. posing questions where there's lots of opinions yes yeah 100 percent. so and we did a you did a po we did a couple polls so there was a are you a modern firearms or traditional firearms enthusiast yeah there was lots of people that said both yes a lot of people because there's not the option for both it's one or the other yeah. that's you gotta you pick can't, one you can't multiply like, yeah no what uh, was the results i never actually looked at the numbers there was a there was a lot of traditional shooters out there okay but there's a lot more modern okay <laughs> okay 
a substantial amount more modern shooters, but that that goes with it anyway, because that's what um, new shooters coming into into this field are going to be growing right. up with, right? So yep. they didn't grow up with a revolver; they grow like they were growing up with a Glock. Yep, very so, true. You stick um, with what you know. Yeah, and the. But I'm glad to see there was actually a lot of the traditional shooters. I think it's something that's still there, and some you know, if you are into the traditional firearms, like yeah. you're very passionate about them. So oh, yes, yeah, yeah. You, you don't get a guy who's yeah, I guess I shoot a black powder once in a <laughs> no. while. No, it's like it's a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, you're casting bullets. Yeah. You know, you got the everything involving the entire, which process, is great to so. see, and great to see that those people are also engaging on our social media yeah. platforms. So. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you guys for that. We also had a second one that's always a good a good topic, and that is the bullpup. Um, is it innovative or is it a lost cause? A I believe cause. is how you worded that. <laughs> <laughs> and that one always gets a lot of response. Yes, so. myself. I have said this multiple times. I do not like bullpup <laughs> rifles. I just and don't. that is your opinion. And that is my opinion. <laughs> I am allowed to have that one, and everyone's allowed to have theirs. Yeah. So, uh, not surprisingly, a lot of people are like, "No, it's not a lost cause, you dumb dumb." Uh, <laughs> they're like, "Yeah, it's, it is an innovative idea," and the term "innovative" came up in in discussion as well because it has been around for like thirty years. Right, more. it's not like, a brand new thing anymore. This isn't this some point. experimental design, but it's it, still a different design. It's something different. Yeah, your yeah. your most common firearms generally aren't bullpup. Right, but it is getting that platform that's you know 40 inches long and you're compressing that way down if you have a big 26 inch barrel especially on like something like the desert tex yeah being a bullpup precision rifle you're getting that platform that much smaller myself if well for you too if you're yeah. a lefty for a lot of them yeah and you know, i think go that fly is... a kite because you're not shooting it yeah <laughs> well and there is a limited availability of left-handed products out yes. there i mean not necessarily availability but they aren't as easy to come by there aren't as many options yeah. so it's definitely something that can lend itself to the left-handed shooter and actually talking about bullpups one company that is being very innovative in that sense is actually caltech because they yeah. have their rdb and their rfb which regardless of what hand you are it either ejects out the front or ejects out the bottom yeah so it doesn't matter fully ambi yeah which makes it a lot nicer for someone like you yeah there you go. The wrong person. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being left. You're just not right. <laughs> but I'm both. What do you say to that? So am I. See, I'm goofy because I am left eye dominant, but I'm right handed. So yeah. rifle, shotgun, shoot left, handgun, shoot right, but over here a little bit. <laughs> So yeah, I'm. So I am right and wrong. <laughs> yes, I'm right eye dominant. I shoot right handed. Every sport I play, I shoot like I'm left handed. Yes. And I can shoot well. rifles left handed, but I, for the life of me, when I pick up a shotgun, it is like a foreign object if I put it on my other shoulder. Oh, yeah. I can't get like I don't know how to work the pump. How well, does and to this some happen? extent, that just would have been how you were taught too. Yeah, so. but I can pick up a rifle, yeah. and it's like it's normal. Hmm. But a shotgun is just completely out of this realm. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> Very interesting how everyone. Yeah. Does it. Differently. Maybe I should try a bullpup. No. no. I don't think I will. You, but. you would love it. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, God. You've had your opinion for so long and you go to try it. <sighs> I'm stubborn enough just to never try it. <laughs> and uh, one other post that got a lot of attention, you had posted a picture of the B&T Bruggen Tomet yes. uh, APC 223 Canadian version, yeah. non-restricted. Boom. So um, that's a little bit different of a class firearm right there because, yeah. I mean, you're looking at about four grand for that yeah but it is a work of art it is a work of art swiss engineering <laughs> yeah uh the the action has been described in a lot of different ways either being uh you can bring food into it like buttery <laughs> uh very that, smooth it's a very smooth action essentially it feels like it's on ball bearings yeah. like there's no risk there's very little resistance actioning back and forth there's zero drag there's no grit no nothing yeah so it's um it is a work of art in that sense the canadian version of course is a little bit heavier a little bit bigger it's because got that longer barrel canada woo yeah but it's still a, a decent platform accuracy out of them is pretty good yeah. and we do have a big shipment of them coming i was just going to get to that late so. third quarter fourth quarter okay lots of lots of questions on availability yeah. and they are being made right now so yeah. they're in production uh generally the canadian ones are a special run for us because yeah why make them that way if you don't have to other right. than for Canada so uh, we are accepting back orders oh yeah totally so if you definitely know you want one get in touch with us and we can get that back order placed so that you know you have one coming as soon as they're ready bam <laughs> same with the GHM 9s APC 9s APC 223s yeah. etc 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 definitely yeah yeah no that's um, it's an awesome product line 
It really is. And yeah. uh, Garen Thumb did the his review oh, on yeah. it, right. which kind of spurred everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was really good. He had an awesome video. And his, I really wish we had who he I works with. I didn't watch it, so I don't know <sighs> what you're talking about. Yeah, I will show you it after. It is basically... It's it, it's it's inappropriate for me to talk about how awesome it is. Like, <laughs> like way, are you talking about the camera? Thing? Yeah, the oh, camera okay. work. It, it's amazing. An um, actual, well, probably a, like proper professional. Yes. Camera crew. Oh, yeah, he's <laughs> got quite the system going. But yeah, they, they do awesome work. And shout out to uh, Arm and Gun because he was actually um, mentioned in that review. And oh, I nice. know uh, we I haven't talked to Armin a lot in the last little bit here. We've both been busy, but yep. Hi, Armin. <laughs> No, um, yeah, the review is really good, so check that out. Uh, it gives you kind of a rundown of, that's the U.S. model, of course. Yeah. Canada would be a little bit different, but that's what we got coming. So check it out. Let us know what you think. And check out Armin Gunn's uh, Instagram and his YouTube, because he Lots goes over B&T like there's no tomorrow. Yep. So check it all out. For sure. So I think that's everything we have for a product. Um, we are hoping to get outside and do a TacFit episode today. Uh, four? TacFit four? TacFit four. So... For anybody out there who has ever done the beep test. It sounds awful. <laughs> that'll be my little teaser. Why is it always cardio? It's always cardio. <laughs> it's my only hope. <laughs> uh, so we are going to modify it slightly, but the gist of it is going to be similar to the beep test where you have to run a distance, get on target, make a shot before that next beep, and continue on as the beeps get closer together and uh, so see how far we can make it. I'm going to have a 9 mil. You're going to have a revolver. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me, like, I don't know, like a 338 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hit that, you know, 600 meter target. <laughs> Freehand. Yeah. So it should be interesting. Um, I honestly have no idea how far we'll get. So it starts out, it gets, gives you about uh, eight seconds, I think. It gets faster and faster. And gets faster and faster. And faster. Uh, traditionally, the distance is 20 meters. We're going to cut that down a bit to probably 15. Well, we do have to shoot. Because we so... have to make that shot. And we want to like we want it to last a little while, yeah. not too long, not too short. It's long enough. <laughs> so yeah, if you're interested, uh, check that out. I might have the video ready, so there might be a link here. If not, we'll definitely be posting about it once it's ready. Yeah. So. And I was shooting this past weekend too. That was right. The other we were supposed to start the episode with that. Yeah. Made some in news. Other, in other news. In other news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shooting last weekend. Uh, it Selkirk. Was Selkirk. Yep. yep. Those guys uh, put on a really good match. So big thanks to the match director there. I managed to end up six overall, which nice. I thought I had a good match. The worst part of it was we had about two hours of downtime. Mm -hmm. So that's always tough. Cooking in the sun. Yeah, it was for, hot. Yeah, for two hours and not doing anything. Like yeah. we were literally just sitting there waiting yeah. for the the next squad to move on. So it's like, oh man, sucks the life right out of you. Yeah. So the last stage, which was the biggest stage of the day, was our last one after two hours of downtime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, ended up six overall, so it was a good match. Um, There's some kind of video playing in the background, I'm assuming. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a good match. Um, lots of fun. And yeah. When's yeah. your next one? Oh, actually, the next one is going to be really fun because uh, if anyone's familiar with the Euro Extreme match, that happens in Europe, obviously, <laughs> Euro Extreme, uh, we are having the Manitoba Extreme. Okay. So that's coming up next month because that's going to be. Essentially, you shoot a, a micro match with large stages, okay. and then you eliminate shooters. So oh. the bad terminology. <laughs> the top six move on, right. and then it's an elimination to right. to the top. Oh, so it's fun. a different style of match. And also, Prairie Brutality 2020 is happening. That's here at the uh, Fort La Bosse Wild, Wild, Wildlife. Wildlife Association range. Yeah, so that is coming up in September. That's a couple months away, but that one's going to be a big fun one, and you're also attending it, by the way. Oh, yeah. am I? Yeah. You're attending it. <laughs> so, <yeah>. Well, <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have a revolver and a lever action. <laughs> you are shooting this. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. So prairie brutality is a combination of physical and mental uh, strengths because there is different ones where you're doing. It looked fun last year. I'm pretty sure we showed some clips. Yeah. Um, We're gonna. We bring... had a great turnout last year. Oh too, yeah. So. We had an awesome turnout. We're gonna bring in a couple different stages this year. Like I said, mental strengths. Um, the just a quick brief. The one stage is called mental math. So oh, there geez, is math. five separate lock boxes <laughs> that you have to shoot towards. So you have to work your way towards them, and you'll be given one combination. And once you open it, you get the next combination for the next box and one digit of the last combination. I think I'm sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to open and remember four separate combinations I and out. the four digits. I'm out already. Like that's not even going to happen. That's not even remotely possible. <laughs> 
It's totally possible. I can't even remember Bring how old a Sharpie. I am. <laughs> well, that's allowed. Okay. Oh yeah, totally. Just scribble on your hand, waste time. It's good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, it'll be a lot of fun. So yeah, that'll be good. Okay. Well, stay tuned for any of that kind of information we'll have coming at you once we get it ready or there more develops. I just have to write it out and we're yeah. good. Okay. Well, we hope you guys are having a good weekend and we hope you enjoyed the episode and yeah. see you next week. Don't forget about us. Bye.